What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I am always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. And today we are going to be talking about how awesome the Ten Commandments are. No, I didn't stutter. You heard me correctly. Today we're talking about how awesome the Ten Commandments are, and on a lot of different levels. So, a little bit of a backstory. I have been thinking about the law for a bit of a, a, a minute here. Uh, so, the fates have conspired that um, uh, for the remainder of this week, I get to call a phone number every day and find out if I have jury duty. So, that's fun, uh, because my boss and I never quite know if I'm going to be showing up to work the next day or not. And when you're a senior... Uh, <laughs> that, that has some implications. Uh, rank has its privileges. Rank also has its responsibility. But uh, I've been thinking about the law lately because I've got this jury duty thing that I, I, every day I have to call and find out if I'm going in or not. And uh, then social media hits. And there's this tweet by Alyssa Milano about how women should go on a sex strike until men stop making rules about abortion or something like that. And I got to thinking when I saw that, I'm like, how stupid do you have to be uh, as a leftist to literally come full circle uh, from I don't want to obey the law, God's law, all the way around to, you know what, I think the best way to avoid this issue is to obey God's law. Uh, specifically in this case, thou shalt not murder uh, and thou shalt not commit adultery. So you've got uh, the fifth commandment and the sixth commandment right there on social media. Uh, thou shalt not commit adultery, the sixth commandment. Thou shalt not murder, the fifth commandment. Uh, and how outside of your brain do you have to be to be like, oh, you know what the answer to the abortion problem is? <laughs> We shouldn't have sex until we're married. Like, the <laughs> so I've been thinking about the Ten Commandments, and there's a couple things I want to go over uh, about how Christians view the Ten Commandments. So um, one of the most amazing things I've ever heard of the Ten Commandments uh, is not only are they God's law, not only are they thou shalt, as in you must, <clears throat> they are also... Uh, promises. So think about it. You shall have no other gods. Uh, in this life, uh, that is a command. You will not have another god. You will not fear, love, or trust in anything else above the triune God. But that's also a promise to the Christian that a day will come when the trumpet will sound and we will be raised from corruption into that which is incorruptible. Our bodies will be raised in the resurrection and finally, we shall have no other gods. The little idol of ourselves that we build in our hearts, that won't be an issue anymore. We will only have for ourselves the one true God. Uh, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. In this life, that is a command. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Uh, in the resurrection, in the new heaven and the new earth, that is a promise, you shall not. <laughs> uh, you shall honor the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. That's a promise in the resurrection. Uh, you, will honor, you shall honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. These are all the rules that we have to follow in this world. But those are promises to us as Christians that in the world to come, this is how life is going to be. And how wonderful and what a blessing that is going to be when these commandments are the norm and not the rules. This is just the way things are. And so that brings us to the three uses of God's law. There are three purposes for which God has given the law uh, the, as a curb, as a mirror, and as a guide. So to both the Christian and the non-Christian, to the believer and the non-believer, the law serves as a curb, and especially uh, commandments 4 through 10, or the second table of the law. Uh, these, All of these commandments are written on our heart, and that's why we, 
uh, as lawbreakers, rebel against the Ten Commandments so much. We know God's law. It's written on our heart. We know all of these things and we rail against them. But these things are written to the believer and the unbeliever that, look, this is this is just how life is. You know, this is this is this is these are the rules. This is basic human decency here. Or uh, as I've said in some of my more candid moments when I engage in theological conversations with people, don't be a dick. You know, the, <laughs> I've heard a lot of non-Christians summarize Christianity as don't be a dick. And I suppose in the common vernacular, that's fair. Uh, but then the law also serves as a mirror. And now we're getting into, into the, the, the life of the Christian a bit more. But it also serves as a mirror to the non-Christian. When we look at the Ten Commandments, and especially those first three, you shall have no other God, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, you shall honor the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, and then you shall honor your father and mother, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house or your neighbor's possessions. Then it works as a mirror, and we look at it and go, wow. I fall woefully short of these commandments. And if this is the standard, these 10 alone, I am damned. So in that regard, the law shows us our sin and how far we fall short of God's command. And it also shows us our need for a savior. But then there's that third use of the law as a curb. And this this is a use for Christians because the unregenerate heart, the heart of humanity in its pure, unregenerated form, I struggle to use the word pure, in its unregenerated, unrepented form, hates God's law because it hates the first commandment, you shall have no other gods. To the unregenerate heart, I am my own God. I fear, love, and trust in myself above all things. And that then in turn interprets how I'm going to handle these other commandments. Well, we can forget about taking the Lord's name in vain. I am God. I'm not going to abuse my own name. And if I do, well, it's my name. <clears throat> uh, I'm not going to honor the Sabbath day. That's no, that's ridiculous. I'm not going to church on Sunday. I'd rather sleep in. I've got stuff to do. Um, honor your father and mother. Good night. <laughs> Uh, which one of us has ever honored our parents? Which one of us has ever fear and, feared and loved God so we do not despise or anger our parents and other authorities, but, you know, honor and obey them, serve and love them? None of us. Why would we do that? We hate the concept of authority and we hate the concept, concept of submitting to authority. You shall not murder? Well, now we're back to that uh, Alyssa Milano tweet, aren't we? Uh, abortion is murder. It is killing an innocent living human being who did not ask to be conceived, but has been conceived on account of two adults who consented to a biological act that ends in conception. I am a Christian man. I, I firmly believe what the Bible says about sex, but I'm telling you right now, I did not pray my children into existence. I have children, and they were conceived in the natural way. And of course, sex being a gift from God, the first thing God said to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. Sex was instituted not only for the mutual pleasure of husband and wife and service uh, to each other of husband and wife, giving of oneself to another person intimately and mutual satisfaction that comes from that, but also for the procreation of children within that family unit that has been established from the Garden of Eden. And so abortion violates that because statistically, at least in the United States, very few abortions are performed, a fraction of a percent, really, of abortions in America are performed because, well, rape or incest. And these are terrible things. The <laughs> These two violate the Ten Commandments. And so this is why the Ten Commandments are actually kind of awesome. Uh, and I can speak as a Christian on this because getting back to that third use is a curb, the regenerated heart, the Christian heart, longs to obey these commandments, 
wants to obey these commandments. These commandments are given to the Christian to show us how life should be amongst people. The, there's the first table of the law, the first three commandments, but these, these other tables, this other table of the law, commandments 4 through 10, that Jesus summarized, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Honor your father and mother, not only father and mother, but to obey all civil authorities. Uh, you shall not murder, which is to maliciously intend to kill someone. I've had to wrestle with this commandment because I spent eight years in the army and I've always understood it to be thou shalt not kill, but it's actually thou shalt not murder. And that has implications, had implications for me as a soldier because my job sometimes required me to kill. The reminder then from the Apostle Paul that the government has the right to bear the sword. So, <clears throat> you know, you shall not steal. You can't take something that doesn't belong to you. Yeah, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. These commandments protect all the good and gracious gifts that God has given us, primarily his self, his name, a day of rest, authority, which is a gift from God meant to be there in service and protection, and our life and our body, thou shalt not kill, these commandments serve to protect the good gifts that God has given us. And on that level, these commandments are awesome. And the Christian, though failing like everybody else to keep them, is different from the rest of the world because they want to keep them, because we know that this is what life should look like. We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And primarily to break any of the commandments is to break the first commandment. And so we have, you shall not murder. And we have, you shall not commit adultery. And that's a big one in American culture these days. Who are you to tell me who I can and cannot have sex with? I've even been told in conversation with people, I am just giving in to my natural biological urges. Correct. Those are your natural biological urges given to you by God for the express purpose of mutual satisfaction between husband and wife and for the purpose of procreation. And when you give in to those natural biological urges, the natural outcome is going to be conception, bringing forth a human life. This is literally elementary because we learned this in elementary school. Where do babies come from? Oh, not to put too fine a point on it, insert rod support A into slot B, baby. That's a, <laughs> yes, there is a, a specific physical act that on several occasions I engaged in with my wife for the sole purpose of creating children. I don't have a single child that was an accident. My children were conceived out of love. Did I break this commandment to not commit adultery before I was married? Oh, yes, I did. And hindsight's twenty twenty. and I hate and loathe and regret that decision to have not saved myself for my wife. But, and here comes that gospel message, when we fail to keep these commandments, when we fail to keep them as a guide, when we look to them as a mirror and see that we fall woefully short and we need a savior, and even to the Christian who longs to obey these commandments, I'm sorry, I'm pointing because I have them up in front of me, even though I don't really need to look at them. Uh, when we fail to keep them, God has sent his only begotten son to be the perfect law keeper on our behalf. Not a single law that God has given has Christ ever broken. And he, perfect man and perfect God, bears the condemnation of our sin for having broken these commandments in his flesh and endures on the cross in addition to physical suffering, in addition to psychological suffering from scorn and mockery, he suffers the wrath of God and the condemnation that comes from having broken these commandments. And he gives freely of his own mercy and goodness to you, his righteousness. He bore the condemnation for your sin on the cross because you and I are law breakers. He, the perfect law keeper, God and man in one Christ. Oops, <clears throat> there we go. Bet you that sounded good. Obeying the law, being condemned for having broken it and giving to you instead the righteousness that he has merited for himself. 
So when we look to this as a guide and we see it in our society and in our culture, oh, oh we're going to stop having sex until you start passing more laws that allow women to have abortions. That's literally the answer. Stop having sex outside of marriage. And that's why the commandments are cool, because they protect us. I did not need to experience the heartache that I experienced from breaking the commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. The woe that I brought onto myself from giving in to that temptation, the heartbreak, the heartache, the, the, I'm sorry to be so crass, but playing Russian roulette with my penis and coming away unscathed by the grace of God, the, the, the sexual playing field is dirty as hell out there. God gave us this commandment out of love, to protect us, to protect the good and gracious gifts. That is why all of the commandments are summed up in that one word, love. Jesus says the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. The summary of these commandments is love. These commandments are proof that God loves us. And the chief most gift that he could ever give us is himself and his name and the worship of him, the first three commandments, and he protects those for us with those commandments. And the good gifts that he gives us in society, authority, and our life, and our chastity, and our possessions, and our reputation, these things are protected by the commandments. And they're kind of awesome in that regard. We wouldn't have to have this debate about whether or not women should have the right to kill a living human being inside of their body if men and women together kept the commandment to not commit adultery. We wouldn't have to have a debate in our culture about gun laws and what does the Second Amendment mean if men and women together kept the commandment, you shall not murder. My house, my house would not need to be protected by that same Second Amendment, and I wouldn't have to lock my doors at night if we could keep the commandment, thou shalt not steal. These commandments are good and gracious gifts from God to protect the good and gracious gifts that he has given us. And God is so good and so gracious that when we trespass his law, he has already, on our behalf, condemned his son in our place. These commandments are pretty awesome. These are the things that I have been thinking about, uh, given everything that I'm seeing in culture and the fact that I have to think about the law because I'm on jury duty. Uh, and so I thought I'd share them with you. Thank you for tuning into 1517 Films. And until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.